All right, this is our lesson on optimization, um, everybody's favorite topic. This is where we can um, figure out the minimum or the maximum of something. Um, this is actually one of the more useful topics that we cover um, as far as like real world scenarios go. Um, if you're running a business, you want to try to optimize your profits, you want to maximize your profits, or maybe you want to minimize your cost. Okay, so being able to come up with an equation that models you know, profit or models cost, and then uh, finding the maximum or minimum of that um, is a good skill to have. And so that's what we're doing today. So um, we have a particle that moves along the x-axis, so its position is given by this. We want to find the minimum velocity of the particle and the time at which it occurs. Okay, so we have a closed interval. A closed interval is an important thing to have to be able to find an absolute maximum or minimum when it says the minimum. Uh, this means absolute. And so we're going to use the candidates test to do this. That's the way we normally do absolute maximums and minimums. Uh, but there is a second method that you can use, um, and it only applies in certain situations, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, so identify what you're taking the minimum of, and you need to have the derivative of this. So to find a minimum or a maximum of something, you need the derivative of that something. So I currently have position. So I know that I need to find the velocity because that's what I want to find the minimum of. So that's what we're going to do first. V of t is equal to s prime of t. So that is 3t squared minus 10t plus 12. Then to find the minimum of this velocity, I need the derivative of the velocity. Okay, we know that's equal to acceleration, but we don't really care about that right now. So v prime is equal to 6t minus 10. All right, so your maximums and minimums will occur at the end points given to you or at a critical point. So we need to take that and set it equal to zero. Let me switch color. Do a bit of algebra and we get t equals 10 over six, which reduces to five thirds. All right, so we're going to make a table showing our endpoints. So we have T and we have V of T. So the thing you're finding the minimum of goes in your table. We're going to have zero in there, one of our endpoints. We're going to have five thirds in here, and we're going to have four. All right, we're plugging these back into the velocity function. So V of zero would just be 12. V of four, all right, that's uh, three times 16 is 48. Four times 10 is minus 40 plus 12. So that's eight plus 12, which is equal to 20. All right, this one will be a little more challenging. Let's see, V of five thirds. All right, so that's three times 25 over nine minus 10 times five over three plus 12. All right, so three and nine reduced to a three. So I get 25 over three. 10 times five is 50 over three. And then if we get a common denominator, this will be 36 over 3. So 25 and 36 add up to 61. 61 minus 50 is 11. So we get 11 thirds right there. All right, we are trying to find the minimum velocity. 11 thirds is certainly smaller than 12 or 20. So uh, that's it. Um, let's see, what was the question? Um, Find the minimum velocity of the particle and the time at which it occurs, justify your answer. All right, so the minimum velocity is 11 thirds at t equals 5 thirds. And then our justification is the candidates test, is the table. So if you do the candidates test, uh, you don't have to write anything else. You just write the answer, and then your table counts as your justification. All right, so that's one of the really nice things about the candidates test. All right, so method two. So uh, you would still do the same first steps. You would find your velocity. You would take the derivative of velocity. You would set it equal to zero and get your critical points. All right, so V of t is equal to, or we'll say V prime of t is equal to 6t minus 10, and so t is equal to 5 thirds. All right, so once you find your critical points, then uh, you can use your number line. And we have endpoints on our number line because it's a closed interval. So we have zero here, we have four here, and then we have five thirds. All right, we're going to plug these things into the derivative, into V prime. Okay, so we can pick like one on this side, and six minus 10 is a negative. 
and then we could pick um, two on this side and 12 minus 10 is a positive. So we know that velocity is decreasing and then increasing, uh, which means this has to be a minimum. And since this is the only critical point on there, this has to be the absolute minimum because the graph is always decreasing from zero all the way down to five thirds, it's decreasing. And then from five thirds all the way to four, it's increasing. So on that interval, negative five thirds has to be where the minimum is located. Okay, so there's a couple different ways you can write this out. I'm gonna write it out the most concise way. Um, we would still need to find our um, velocity at this point because we would want the actual minimum. So we would do our whole, this process here and we would get 11 thirds. All right, well, once we found the y value, then we're ready to write our answer. So we would say uh, the minimum velocity is 11 thirds at t equals 5 thirds because v prime of t is less than zero on zero is less than t is less than 5 thirds and v prime of t is greater than zero on, um, no parentheses, on 5 thirds is less than t is less than four. That would be good. So we say that the velocity, derivative of velocity is always negative on this interval and always positive on this interval, which means at that five thirds, that had to be the minimum point. Okay, so that's one way you can write it out. Um, another way you could say is you say your answer, the minimum velocity is 11 thirds at t equals five thirds because um, the v prime, all right, so here, I'll write it down so I'm not just saying it. Okay, so blah, 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 because, all right, I'll put an or here, dot, 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 because um, t equals 5 thirds is the only critical point and v prime of t changes from negative to positive. I'll just put there at that point. All right, so you have to either identify it as the only critical point on the interval and that V prime changes from negative to positive, or you can just say V prime is always negative on this interval and always positive on this interval. And those two intervals cover the entire thing, cover from zero to four, which is what they asked us to do. So either one of those ways is acceptable um, to prove an absolute minimum or an absolute maximum. Okay, so the key here is that you're only going to be able to use this second method if you have one critical point. Okay, if you have two critical points, out the window. The only way to do it with two critical points is uh, method number one with the candidate's test. Okay, so if you have a single critical point, um, this is an option. All right, I think that's what this box is saying. If the absolute maximum minimum occurs at an endpoint and not a critical number, okay, not saying the exact same thing, but it is possible for our, if they had asked for the absolute maximum velocity, uh, this wouldn't work, right? Because um, it would either be at zero or at four, and um, we can only use this if it occurs at the critical point, okay? So um, that's another reason why you would be forced to use the candidate's test. I use the candidate's test for absolute maximum minimum as many times as possible, but in this optimization section, there are problems where it's hard to identify the endpoints. They don't give us an interval, all right? And so it's going to be pretty helpful to be able to use the um, this second method um, for this particular section. All right, so um, we have a swimmer that is two miles in the ocean and wishes to get to town, which is three miles down the coast. We see a picture over there. The swimmer needs to swim to the shore and then walk along the shore. He can swim at two miles per hour and walk at four miles per hour. To what point should he swim along the shoreline so that it takes, so the time it takes to get to town is a minimum? Okay, so we need a variable in here somewhere. And so we are trying to figure out how far in from here does he need to swim. So we're going to label that with our X because that's what we want to find. And then we can use the Pythagorean theorem um, on this triangle to get this distance right here. Um, so this will be the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus x squared. All right, then we need this distance right here. That's the distance that he will walk. 
and uh, the whole thing's three miles, and this is x miles, so this is three minus x miles. All right, time equals distance divided by rate. Distance divided by rate. All right, so we're gonna make a um, expression for time to swim. All right, so the distance that he will swim is along the hypotenuse here. So that represents the distance. Square root of four plus x squared divided by the rate that he swims, he can swim at two miles per hour, so two. All right, then we're gonna make a time for him to walk. All right, so he's gonna walk along this distance here, which is represented by three minus x, and he can walk at four miles per hour. So the total time, which I'm gonna call t of x, is equal to the time to swim plus the time to walk. So the square root of four plus x squared over two plus three minus x over four. All right, so we need to find the time it takes for as a minimum. So we wanna find the minimum of this equation, which means we need to take the derivative of this equation. So t prime of x is equal to, all right, I'm gonna pull the one half away. That's the one over two right there. And then I'm taking the derivative of this thing. So it has a one half power. So I multiply by a half, keep the inside the same, subtract one from the exponent. So negative a half, chain rule, multiply by two X. All right, plus I have my one fourth, derivative of three is zero, derivative of negative X is negative one. Let's clean it up a bit because I'm gonna have to set this thing equal to zero. So um, this two cancels with one of the one halves, doesn't matter which one. So I'm gonna have an X on top, I'm gonna have a two on bottom, and I'm gonna have a square root of four plus X squared on bottom. This thing is negative one fourth. All right, we can do a little more to clean it up, but I think that's good. All right, this is t prime of x right here. All right, now we need to find our critical point. So we're going to set our derivative equal to zero. So we get x over 2 square root of 4 plus x squared is equal to 1 fourth, just adding that over. Cross multiply. So 4x is equal to 2 square root of 4 plus x squared. Let's uh, square both sides. So 16x squared is equal to 4, 2 squared, and then times 4 plus x squared. I'm going to divide by 4. 4x squared is equal to 4 plus x squared. Subtract the x squared over. 3x squared is equal to 4. x squared is equal to 4 thirds. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 thirds. Um, the negative doesn't make sense because x represents a distance along the shoreline, and so we can't have a negative distance, so x is equal to the square root of four-thirds. All right, so you have two options here. You can go with the candidates test or you can go with the number line method. Um, I think I like the candidates test here, so let's do it. We have x and we have t of x, which we're trying to minimize. So the smallest number x could be is... Uh, our swimmer could swim straight in and walk the entire distance. So that would be X is zero. Then our critical point is square root of four thirds. And then our longest point is the swimmer could swim all the way to town, no walking at all. And so that would be X is equal to three. So we're gonna plug those into our um, equation over here. Okay, so if we plug in zero, I get square root of four, which is two, divided by two, which is one. If I plug in zero here, I get three fourths. So it's one plus three fourths which would be seven fourths. All right, and this is our time and uh, we're in miles per hour. So this is miles divided by miles per hour. So this is in hours. All right, I'm not gonna do that one yet. Uh, let's do three. So three squared is nine, four plus nine is 13. So I get square root of 13 over two plus uh, three minus three is zero, so plus zero. So that's square root of 13 over two. If you want to get it into a common denominator, 2 square root of 13 over 4 hours, just so we can compare to this. All right. Uh, this one, you really need a calculator to do it. There's no good way to do this one in the candidate test without a calculator. So um, I will get the calculator pulled up, and then we can do that. That'll help us get this one as well. 
this is one reason why maybe doing the number line method is um, a little better because um, we can identify this as the minimum. And they actually didn't ask us to find the minimum, right? They said, to what point should he swim along the shoreline? And so if this is the minimum, that is the point to swim along the shoreline. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to start by typing in our equation right here because we're plugging these into T of X. So I'm going to save this equation um, in my calculator. So T of X, and then hit your control, this button to store it. And then I'm going to get my fraction here, square root 4 plus X squared divided by 2 plus 3 minus x divided by 4. All right, so that's saved. So I can go t of uh, 0 just to test it out. So there's my 1.75. That's good. We'll do t of uh, 3. And I'm putting a decimal so I get decimal form. So that's 1.803. Okay, so I'm going to copy that answer down. I have the square root answer there. Um, so this is approximately equal to 1.803. All right, then I'm going to do my t of the square root of 4 over 3, 1.616. So they're all pretty close to each other, so definitely calculator required here. All right, so now that we've done the candidates test, we can just say um, the swimmer. should swim to x equals um, the square root of four thirds. Let's let's get a decimal form for that. Um, square root four divided by three. All right, 1.155. 1.155. There. Sorry, I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to go to a new line. This is one, two, x equals 1.155 miles. For the time it takes to get to town. To be a minimum. All right. And again, the candidates test up there is our justification. So we don't have to write anything else for that. All right. So I mentioned that you could have done this with the with a number line method, um, and probably a little bit easier on this one. So let's let's check that out real quick. Okay. So we know that we have endpoints at zero and three, and then we know our square root of four thirds is in here. And we just found out from the calculator that it's 1.155. And again, because I didn't have to report what the actual time was, I didn't have to plug it into T at all. All I had to do is report which number, 0, 1.155, or 3, which one of those is where the minimum happens. Okay, so I'm going to plug these into T prime. And all I'm looking for is for it to change from negative to positive. All right, so I'm going to go with 1 here, T equals 1. Let's see if I can figure out without a calculator. All right, I'm trying to do this without a calculator. So I'd have one on top, and then four plus one is five. So it's one over two square root of five. So T prime of one is what I'm doing here. One over two square root of five minus one fourth. All right, well, two times two is four. And square root of five is a little bit bigger than square root of four. So this number is a little bit bigger. Uh, the denominator is a little bit bigger than this denominator, which means the fraction is a little bit smaller. So I know that it's less than zero. So it's a negative. All right, then let's go with two. So that's going to be a two on top. So the twos cancel. Two over two, square root of, and then two squared is four, four plus four is eight. So square root of eight minus one fourth. So again, the twos cancel. So I get a one on top, and I get a square root of eight on bottom. Um, and square root of 8 is a little smaller than 4, right? 4 is square root of 16. And so if the denominator is smaller, the fraction is bigger. So a bigger number minus a smaller number is positive. 
And so since T prime changes from negative to positive, and this is the only critical point, uh, we can report that this is the, the minimum. All right, so the way we would justify our answer here is the minimum time occurs at x equals 1.155 because t prime of x is less than zero when zero is less than x is less than 1.155 and t prime of x is greater than zero when 1.155 is less than x is less than 3. All right, or we could go with that only critical point version as well. All right, so there's day one of optimization. Hopefully that went okay for you. We'll see you for the next video.